Good day, my friends. It's the Oklahoma Guru again. Today we're going to go after a few things that uh, are on my mind. For one, it's both the scientist who, uh, who claims in the, that the Big Bang is the uh, creation of all things, and the Christian theology that there's only one God and that, that God created the universe. So let's go. Let, let's let's uh, let's talk about little Johnny first, because little Johnny is a very important part of this uh, story. Little Johnny is going. It went to school. He's in he's in uh, kindergarten, and then and then they get to where people can count one, two, three, four. No, getting a foundation. All right, and then the teacher puts up on the on the blackboard. She says. She puts up there one plus one, and she asks the class, does anybody know what one plus one is? And, and little Johnny, sure enough, he raises his hand. He says, teacher, the answer is three. And, and the teacher being so kind, don't want to hurt little Johnny's feelings. She says, you're right, Johnny. Well, Johnny's uh, grown up now, and now he now he can't uh, get a job because uh, because he doesn't have the foundation in which uh, allows him to add uh, add numbers together. Remember, he said one plus one equals three, and the teacher said, "Yeah, that's right, John." And then for the rest of his life, he's a failure because somebody wasn't honest with him. So let's be honest. The uh, there's a video I watched, and I'll put the links down to these videos I watched, uh, uh, so you can watch them the same way. And there's this scientist, or this guy evaluates whatever, you know, does something similar to I do, but in a different way. But he's there, and he's got uh, uh, this thing in his mind that the that the Big Bang is how the universe was created, and. Uh, he says that uh, 13.8 billion years ago that the expansion of the universe started at that moment. And at that moment, it was capable of affecting 86 billion light years of distance. Meaning that the expanse of the universe is 86 point 86 billion light years because of this massive explosion. Okay. Well, you can say whatever you want to say, but here's here's where the math comes in. It's funny. So remember, the universe is 86 billion light years in distance. But yet, he says that if you do the math, see, he... he See, he forgets the light light years, all right? Light years. He says 13.8 million years ago. And then he says, if you multiply that by two, then somehow you get uh, to the point where you can get, if you multiply it enough, that you can get, you get 43 billion light years from that center point from where the uh, Big Bang started. And so, and then from that point to the other side, you get another 43 billion light years. And then all total, you get 40 or 86 billion light years. So, so now, again, it wasn't 13.8 billion light years ago. It was 13.8 billion years ago that they proclaimed that the universe got his its start. And then you have um, this idea that because there's a hot spot in the universe, that they're saying that this is where it all started from. See, they have to hold on to a narrative. If if they if if, if the math doesn't work, doesn't matter if the math works or not, they gotta hold to the narrative because that's where they get their uh, they get their uh, uh, 
funding from or they get their uh, following from is they hold to this narrative. They tell you things that are unbelievably illogical, completely illogical. They don't show you the, the uh, mathematical equation about it. And then they pretend like, oh, we got it all. We, we, we figured this all out. And, and think about this. The universe somehow stops somewhere. It, it just stops. And then as material enters into, from, from the center, okay, from the center, in which it, it came from, from that center, it moves into this, what? It's into nothingness. Nothing will exist, and then all of a sudden, it exists. Magic, magic, magic is what it's called. There's no wall at the edge of the universe. It's just more space. It's just more space to be filled in, to be affected. Because we have no idea what's beyond our universe. Because there is nothing beyond the universe. Because if you think about it, Let's say, let's say, <coughs> let's say that beyond our universe, just pretend, all right, because it's not, it's not. Just pretend like there's a universe that is beyond our universe. And the two universes came together. They would be, they would share like materials. It's like, better yet. It's like our galaxy is our galaxy. And the, there's other galaxies that exist. And you can see that there's, there's separation between the galaxies because of the movement of the stars, all right? But they all hold the same material. It's still one universe. So if even if we had another universe, and there's not, because once you bind the two universes together if that's what you know if that's what you want to believe you still have the same materials and it just becomes all one it's just one complete whole there's no separation between matter because let me tell you a story see i had a problem with this uh thing about there being only one god and a long time ago while i was investigating the uh, church and I had, I mean, I beat it to death for about six months. And this is probably about uh, 99 or so. And uh, I had a lot of things going on about that time. And it came to me one day without, it was like, the reason that God is one, because the universe is one whole. All things are one. Figure this out. Did you know in 1996 or 98, now see, they didn't publicize this, but I, and I wasn't reading any science books or anything like that. But in 1996 or 98 was the first time they discovered dark matter, which concluded that all things were one in the universe, that there was no space between matter. They, they just didn't know it, how, it was there. So when it comes to God, all things are one because the universe is one whole. Then you have the uh, the Christians. See, in my in my in my uh, way of thinking, Christianity is the one who came up with the Big Bang for, uh, idea first. They're the ones who said from a single point that all things came into existence by God. That God dwelt beyond universe and then from that single uh, point that all things were created <clears throat> again in my first video you'll hear a little bit of that but and then <clears throat> in that fact <clears throat> excuse me I've been fighting a cold a little bit not coronas not the coronavirus I'm sure of that but anyway there was a, that debate and you can see it in my first video uh, uh, Fred Hoyle basically coined the phrase, uh, uh, talking to a Catholic, uh, uh, George Lemire or, Lemire or something like that. He says, uh, 
uh, the, the Catholic uh, scientist says uh, that God creates everything from a single point, and I can prove it mathematically. And then Fred Hoyle says, well, that just sounds like a Big Bang. So again, Christianity is the one who came up with a Big Bang. Here's the funny thing. So the, the atheist holds to, to an idea that is original to the Christian ideas or to Christian theology. And, and it, you know, and here's, and here's where they get their, uh, the, the first uh, people that started to, you know, talk about this um, creation from a single point was also the same people that said that the earth was flat and the center of the universe. And then they started putting Galileo in jail and people like that who finally said, look, the reality is you're stupid and you're wrong. And they made, made he made so much noise that they just, they just said, he just making, making us look bad and he just won't shut up. So they put him on house arrest. <clears throat> and then they, uh, they, I was watching this other video and here is guy trying to explain the Trinity to me. And he's using Carl Sagan's idea of a complex uh, dimension within the universe. Okay. Let me, let me explain something to you. The most basic fundamental thing about the universe is that there's only three dimensions. That there's, when it comes to uh, 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 physical objects, okay, even, even an electron has uh, only three dimensions. It's not multiple dimensions. It still only has three dimensions. And also, if you think about it, the triangle is the most the most uh, structurally sound um, uh, object that is created. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. Three. The Godhead is three. Seems like everything works in threes. That is the best of all of all structures so to try to to try to say that there's more demand now see there's different uh, uh, <coughs> speeds in which light travels which creates dimension uh, creates separation of course but when it comes to physical objects there's only three dimensions there's height width and depth that's it. Again, so this guy is trying to use Carl Sagan's uh, multi-dimensional uh, understanding of whatever illogical. He says, "I don't know what they look like, but here's a here's an idea," because until you know, because we just don't know the universe well enough. And the and the and the guy is talking about the Trinity, saying, "Well, we just don't know the the uh, the universe well enough, or the the." Uh, the nature of God well enough to explain the Trinity, so it's logical. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This is garbage. It's complete garbage. Because, again, little Johnny says one plus one was three, and now you get the people that say the Trinity, somehow you get one, with, supposedly you're supposed to be able to see a Father, a Son, and a Holy Ghost, within that triune God, but they say, but there's only one God, because that's the way God said it in the Bible. Because there's only one God, remember? Isaiah, Isaiah. He says that there's, that, uh, that, that God's talking to Isaiah, and he's saying, there's only one God, and I know no other God, and there's no gods beside me, no Savior beside me. And, you're, and then, and then Jesus and John says, is it not written that I said, remember, Jesus saying it to the, to the uh, people who want to stone him. He says, is it not written, I said, that ye are gods. So the same God who was in the Old Testament telling Isaiah, that there was no other God beside me, I know no other God, just told them, 
just told them that I said that ye are gods. And he said, whatever my father calleth, then it is. And I'll show you the chapter and the verse, and I'll show you it on the screen. I'm not going to quote it ver verse for verse, but it's there. It's right in your face. And let's not forget, here's where he's at the tomb. He was resurrected. And he, uh, and he just announced to uh, uh, Mary, just figured out through conversation that this is the master. And she went to hug him. And he says, do not touch me, for I have not ascended to my father. Now, usually people stop right there, and then they forget the rest of the verse. Because here we come right down to it. Here's some what we would call God, if you're a Trinitarian or a one that's God, he's standing right there in front of Mary, and he says, Go tell my disciples that I go to the, to my father, who's their father, and my God, who's their God. So, again, I just, it, it just, it, it just well overwhelms me sometimes that to think that people are so hung up on the narrative that they can't escape just absolute, plain, just truth. Honest and honest truth. That they, it, it's, it's overwhelming. Okay, and I just, I can't believe it. And you guys wonder why I wouldn't uh, be an atheist or, or an agnostic or a Christian? Because you guys, because you guys just are just, you lie. You have to lie in order to, to, uh, to uh, have some kind of uh, relevancy. And the people believe lies. Because if it's their desire, either to have a God or to have the ultimate of all gods, and he is, I mean, the Father is the ultimate of all gods. And, you know, when you we can debate, well, does he have a Father and all that, and how do, well, when you become one with the universe, and you become one, remember, Jesus Christ in the prayer, he says the, to the apostles, be like unto me and my Father, be one. And so, when you become one with the universe, and you become one with all those who also are one with the universe. You are the ultimate of all beings in the universe. You are not divided anymore. You are one in purpose. And you have power, ultimate power over all that exists, except for one thing. The universe has its physical laws. And because of those physical laws, even God himself cannot create water hydrogen or water out of anything other than two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Because if it is not two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, that which it affects will affect it exactly the way that the physical laws are designed for its effect. That's the end result. So even God himself has to conform to the universe in its laws. Because he knows that because he's one with the laws of the universe, that he has ultimate power with the universe and its, and, and its cre uh, creative power. So again, this has been fun. I hope this inspires. I know it's long, but hopefully this uh, kind of develops a... Uh, a sense of urgency in your mind to say, wait a minute, people are saying stuff and I'm not really, I'm not really locking in on truth. I'm just following some kind of narrative. I'm just trying to force that, that this idea is true without really looking at it logically. So again, I've set up some uh, foundational videos already that uh, 
will enable you that I don't come by this by just uh, reading a book or, uh, or anything like that. But I truly have been given a gift. And I love that gift. And I'm going to announce it every time that I know that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. And there's nothing in this world that can ever take that away from me. It has burned into me so deeply that I have no choice. I have no choice but to continue on the path that I'm on. I would be really just stupid to do anything else. So, have a great day. Again, if you like this video, press the button. Drop me a line in the comment section. Share it. Subscribe. And have some fun. Be talking to you again sometime. You guys have a great day. This is the Oklahoma Guru signing out.